Often the architecture we love to look at and really want to draw has beautiful ornamentation, which are an important part of the effect. How do we draw it? How do we not become overwhelmed by the detail? And how do we keep it looking right on the surfaces? And how do we work out scale and perspective? I want to show you the way I approach it using a part of this scene. I drew this scene a few years ago. So you can see here how I approached representing the different decorative designs. But I want to look at a smaller section of this scene now and explain what I'm thinking and how I make the choices about how exactly I will represent the decoration that's in my reference. I want to concentrate on parts of this section. G'day, I'm Stephen Travers. And if you haven't hit subscribe yet, then why not subscribe to my channel? Or why not hit notifications? Here comes a train, so I'll get on with the drawing. Well, before we can work out how to put the ornamentation on our walls, we need some walls, we need some surfaces. So I'll just very quickly draw the surfaces that we need to then sort out how to draw all of these decorative elements. There. So I'm playing around here trying to work out the best way to represent this pattern which I see here pretty much straight on. Now I'm not trying to draw this pattern, I'm trying to draw the effect of the pattern. So I look at it and think well what is it that I see? Well I kind of see a heart shape effect happening with the lines. And depending on the light I see two eyes looking at me. So I'm seeing this kind of thing happening. And I'm also of course having to look at the scale with which I'm going to be drawing these. The other significant thing is where our surface changes direction. Where it starts to shift this way. This helps me create the correct distortion for our shape as it moves into the curving archway. So I'm thinking something such as this for these. And so there's the first take of that. Now, obviously it becomes a bit fiddly, but I imagine we're not drawing these if we don't enjoy something of this. Now I'm gonna put the element down here where it is actually closer, but here it's important to see that perspective affects the way this looks. So here at eye level, this line is, is straight. So eye level is about here. And as it goes up, we can see that the angle of the top of this heart motif increases. And as it goes down, it increases the other way. Okay, so now I've got the framework to create the correct perspective angles. I need to draw in this chandelier holder before I can complete the decoration in this section. I'm not trying to capture an exactness, I'm trying to create the effect of a little swirly scroll worked metal. And these hearts are smaller because they're further away, so we see more of them. What we want is for them to look as though it's the same sort of line work as we've done and drawing them one after the other where we still have our muscle memory of how we do the strokes. Bonds each little motif together with a similarity with the ones that we've drawn before. As they become compressed, their shape becomes distorted and so we're not trying to draw the full heart we're really trying to draw the fact that we're getting a squashed image as it goes up over the top. And what other decoration have we got here? Well, we've got this beading that runs here, which we can't see as clearly here. We also have it here and here. So how do we represent that? So when I look closely at this beading, so it's a thin strip and it's basically like a, th a thicker bead, a smaller bead and a thicker bead. What happens is that the shadows in between end up looking dark. 
we end up drawing the shadows because that's what defines the image. And if some of our lines are in the wrong place, we can use beading such as this to reaffirm which of the actual lines is in the correct space. Now up here, the effect is considerably lighter. And there we have it. If it looks a little wobbly, just give it some affirming lines to sit within. And we do have it here as well. And there we have that. So our decoration is coming along. We have this decoration here. How do we want to represent that? So I think basically I'm going to go with something like this. Just make sure we put the decoration in the right spot. This decoration is quite close. So we've drawn it with a little more detail than we're going to use when we draw it in the other place where it is, which is here. And that will be fine for there. Now here we have put that in the wrong place. That is meant to come underneath it, but never mind. A multitude of decoration hides many a mistake. Now let's look at this decoration in here. Now this is a painted decoration. The important thing is to look out for symmetry, but also just for general swirl and effect. So I'm trying to create nice full swirling patterns without worrying too much about what it actually is, although it is some sort of mythological bird by the look of it. And that will probably do for this. Again, we have to be aware of curving surfaces that affect the perspective of the drawing. We have something similar here. It's actually the same pattern, which means our perspective angles have to line up. So we want this to be at the right perspective angle. And like this sort of thing. And we're creating the effect and wanting to look as though this is progressing down. Now for this sculpture. I align the head carefully with the architecture that I've got. Basically just try to do a copy of it. I have no great skill or technique in figure drawing. What I do with statues is I try to see them as a series of shapes that I have to copy. I try not to see them as figures and not to see them as three dimensions. I look at basically the shapes that the folds in the drapery define and seek to reproduce them. I pay as much attention to gaps between shapes as I do shapes. And particularly with the drapery, I pay attention to where it gathers, where lines start to come from at tension points. And I try and capture the feel of those tension points, whether they're just straight lines that splay out from a single point or whether it's some of these V-shaped points. I also try to get that ripple effect where a fold of fabric changes in length as it moves across. Where the knee comes out is important. It's good to align how far different parts of the body come out with the head. And so there is reference to the figure with that. And then it's done. So next we'll have a go at adding this second figure in. So I'm looking at the alignment of these two figures because it's obviously considerably smaller in the perspective angles that we have here. Not thinking of a figure, I'm looking at the shapes, I'm looking particularly at where these drapery lines converge. Now this knee comes out a bit and I want the foot to be about there. Now 
And there we have her. I think we need to do this infill decoration on these pilasters. The decoration in here, in the lower section, is visually pretty random. So I'm just going to be wanting to suggest, both with lines and with small shaded parts, that there is something in there happening. Now higher up, we do get a bit of a sense of the perspective angles happening in the decoration. So I wonder if possible, do some line work that will suggest that. And we have the same decoration in here. We have what we can glimpse in this section here. I brought this line over too far, so there'll be less here to be on show, which is a shame. And we have here the same decorative curls that we have here, but we want to draw them with a much lighter touch and allowing for the perspective that's happening. We may as well try and put this lady in here, what do you think? So we may as well try and put the back of this figure here in. Uh, this statue is, after all, part of the detail. And again, I'm not wanting to try and draw a figure. I'm wanting to capture the various shapes. The top of the head is sort of level with this point here. Well, there's the back of the head, which strikes me as being a bit too large. So it'll be interesting how we can just make adjustments to that. But I want to keep this figure in proportion as well. Fortunately, it is the closest figure. So this actually comes down to pretty much the knee of this one. And I'm looking at this shape here, this sort of teardrop shape. Don't want to draw an arm, just trying to draw. Well, she'll do. She'll have to. I'm drawing straight in ink. Now, I just want to get this little bit of archway finished. And now in this space in here, we get to put our heart shapes. Again, we have this one that was here and now here, but we really just want to suggest it. So all the while, just suggesting the detail that we've drawn in more detail closer. When we do something such as turn a corner, always keep in mind, what does this equal? So this here equals this equals this. It just helps us create some, some consistency. So this line here comes in about there. Now, it was always my intention to add some tone to this. The detail can tend to flatten the effect we're after. I'm using Copic Sketch Markers, the brush end of the markers, and I'm using various shades of the neutral gray color. But really, I'm wanting to use the tone to create a little more three-dimensionality so that we can see the shapes, the arches, the statues with greater clarity because with all of these lines, it can sometimes produce a bit of a tangle visually.
So we're trying not to so much untangle as just to give some extra visual clues for us to understand what's happening. We read tones always in relation to other tones. I would summarize my approach to drawing detail in that I seek to draw the effect of the detail, not the exactness of the detail. So I want to show that this pattern is different to this pattern, but I also want some sense that this pattern and this pattern are the same, that this pattern and this pattern are the same. So don't be afraid of drawing detail. Look at ways to capture the essence of the decoration that is in the reference. Realize that you'll need to draw it with a change in scale as it moves back, which will probably necessitate a lighter touch and a simplified form as it moves further away. And of course, remembering always that any patterns on a surface that is affected by perspective, those patterns also have to be affected by that perspective in the same way if they're to help the surface sit down into its proper position rather than fight against it, create this tension that something's not quite right. So find some detail and get drawing. Have fun. I'll see you next time. Bye.